Hello everyone, how are you all today? Are you well? I hope so. Hello from me and Poppy. <laughs> My goodness, it's suddenly gone really warm again. <sighs> Quick visit this afternoon, which is like the worst time to do it, isn't it? Either come in the cool of the morning or when it's a bit cooler in the evening. Anyway, this is the time I've got, so I've come down now. Um, I have managed a couple of I've been managing little quick visits here and there, so I've been up to some things which I'll show you in the garden in a minute, which I haven't filmed because I've literally just been dash down here, do a job, dash home, get on with other things. Um, I did manage a good kind of sort of five or six hours down here on Sunday in bed three, which I'll show you, and I'm so, so, so grateful that Saturday afternoon and evening it rained. Not heavy, but it was constant, and it was just, just enough to soften the soil for me to work it so I can start sowing. Because it's May, it's the mad month of May, and it's all about the direct sowings. So, as you saw a couple of days ago, I've got my parsnips, calendula, chickpeas, rock and core, calypso and fennel sown. Half the fennel, I'll do another sowing in a couple of weeks. I did sow carrots about three weeks ago, there's no sign of them yet. So I'm gonna give them one more week and then if there's still no sign, I'm gonna re-sow because loads of my friends on site have sown their carrots and there's nothing happening. So there's loads of people on site re-sowing everything. It does seem like a little bit of a bonkers year. My main sowing job today, which is gonna take ages is <laughs> Do you want to get in the basket, Poppy? It's all my beans, all my climbing beans. So I've got my gorgeous big Gigantis, Gigantis by name and Gigantis by size. I've, I've got a cat's bum in my face. I've also got some Borlotti, some Halda, some Necker Queen. I've got some pea beans, some runners and another lovely French bean, a Soissons. So these beans are, generally I'll grow them more for drying. I really don't want your bum in my face, Poppy. <laughs> hair's going everywhere. Uh, they're all for, mostly for drying, but I do like to have, well, I learned by accident last year when everything got blown down that actually freezing some of them while they're still quite green, the beans that is, not the pod, um, it just really helps in terms of cooking if I've forgotten to soak dried beans overnight. I can still grab a portion of beans from the freezer and steam them up in sort of 10-15 minutes. Brilliant. So, let's go into the garden and let me show you what I've been up to and then we'll get sowing some beans. <laughs> I'm going to try and lose this one somewhere. So this is a bit of a clue as to what I've been up to. Oh, we're having gorgeous breezes today but that's probably going to sound really gusty, so I apologise for the sound quality in advance. Right, these are the last bits to go in, but let me show you where they're going. Gosh, it is really quite breezy and gusty. Anyway, here we are, bed three. So hopefully you can see how it's going to take shape now. I'm going to have this um, central path down the middle, just teeny tiny little paths there to access into these beds. And then the idea is I'm going to build these big wigwams, six of them in total, for um, various of the climbing squash. And then underneath, they'll all be underplanted with various, oh, salad leaves, chard, spinach, beetroot, and then the ones these two top beds possibly even three will all be underplanted with the lentils so actually let me give you a closer look because it's all a bit higgledy piggledy bonkers um, now these ones at the front are particularly they're a bit short and a bit spindly and thin so what they're all gonna have so they start off as three so you've got your main pole here and then all of them are gonna have this cross pole so it links two poles all the way around and then there'll be another set coming up up to the top to give it even more sturdiness and um, something for them to climb on but as we come back I'm going to do you can see this is like considerably thicker bits of trunk I've got and whoopla over there too 
they're not straight <laughs> but that's okay so and then the, in the far end those big thick trunks I just showed you that are outside the shed still but I might need a hand to get those up because they're really quite tall so these have all been dug into the ground they all go down oh a good foot or so if not more so they're pretty rock solid at the moment and then I just think as the season goes on it might be that the squash need a bit of help in terms of climbing they might need some strings and some extra tying but with all the bits of the bits of cross bits I'm going to do hopefully that will give them something to scramble up and also to help spread the weight of hopefully lots and lots of squash so the idea will be the the really sturdy ones at that end will have the bigger varieties on like the Sussuin and Violina and then coming forward they'll have the slightly smaller varieties until right here at the front there'll be one for oh I've forgotten now I think one I've decided for honey boat and the other one for the baby button art then in the middle I'm going to have the Gala Destien if that's the name I can't quite remember and the Carnival and then beyond over there where the um, purple sprouting broccoli is still sprouting on the floor will be the Rouge Vif de Tompe. they're the big Cinderella type pumpkins plus a load of sort of standard butternuts um, I just didn't see the Rouge Vif de Tompe climbing nor could I imagine what would possibly hold the weight of those giant pumpkins? So that's one bit of a job. Oh, it's not quite done. Let me just keep bringing you around this way because also as part of finishing all this, where I've got the bean arches, from the sides of the bean arches coming down and sort of staking into the side of each of these beds will be like sort of flying buttresses just to give the um, bean arches a bit more stability, rigidity, because I'm hoping that they're going to be absolutely chock-a-block covered in beans in about whew, two and a half months' time. We can but hope. It's looking a bit Andy Goldsworthy, isn't it? Or Anthony Gormley, whichever one. But yeah, work in progress, but very, very, very nearly there. Woohoo! Also, on another afternoon last week, I've managed to pop in the flint corn. I really wanted to film this just because of sort of talking about spacing, uh, but gosh, I was in such a rush. So, FYI, they're spaced about 10 inches apart, sort of 8 to 10 inches, which is a little bit closer than you might plant sweet corn. But the research I did about this time last year from a small holder in America had tried different spacings and he found that around about nine or ten worked best so that's what I did last summer and it worked great they look a little bit spindly and sad suddenly don't they since putting them out but I'm sure they'll be grand and then just in front I've also done three rows of direct sewing of them just to compare now you'll often hear people talking about plant in blocks not in rows because they're wind pollinated so first of all these are obviously rows there's four rows but you could also imagine it as three um three blocks one two three when people talk about not sewing in rows they mean don't sew in one single row because of wind pollination so what do we mean by wind pollination well putting it simply when you've got your, um, the tassely bits on the top of your corn and then where the cobs are forming the little silks, you want the tassels to fall from the top down onto the silks to pollinate them to give you your cobs. So if you've only got one single row, imagine the wind's coming this way. All those, all those um, fronds from the top are going to be blown over there and not onto the tassels. So that's why we do it like this. So any that are blown from here, hopefully land on the tassels in the next door neighbour, next door neighbour, next door neighbour and as the wind changes you're basically giving yourself the best chance to have pollination whatever the wind direction. So they're in, I've also, like I said there's some direct sown ones plus I did start about 20 more as backup at home which have just come down for hardening so I've already lost one of these, it's been nibbled so hopefully with my backups and the direct sowings I'm going to have a full bed of flint corn this year, even more than I had last year, which is great because that means I'll have more seed to give away, plus more popcorn to eat. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Yay, 
Yay for getting the beans in. Right, I've got my little plan because I'm got I'm doing so many different types and I sort of um, did a bit of a calculation. Oh, I just saw a weed. I did a bit of a calculation at home in terms of how much of each I wanted. So this row is going to be mostly boloshi with a few pea on the end. I'm only going to do a few pea beans because they were fun and lovely, but the yield for the actual amount of space they were taking up wasn't as good as others. Beautiful, beautiful boloshi. So the other lovely thing about beans, I don't know if I mentioned this the other day with chickpeas, maybe I did, but is I'll do all my sowings now. I've got backups in the cold frame. I'll hold on for another couple of weeks and if things don't come up, I've got some left over to sow. But if they all come up and thrive, whatever's left over, I can eat. Yay! Now, I was always taught when you're sowing your beans, per pole or per station, you plant two. One for the farmer and one for the soil. Oh, excuse me, hair in mouth. And it could not be simpler. Dip a little hole, about five centimetres. Drop said bean in. <laughs> Cover with a little soil, a little, a little bit of soil. Wait and hope. Oh, it's so bright today. What I did do just before I started, um, I, I did pop a little bit of um, a watering can of water over this row because, like I say, even though we had that rain the other day, gosh, it didn't do a huge amount, and we are already quite dry. I don't want them to, to just sort of stick them into baked hard concrete. Um, so yeah, just a little sprinkle before. And then when I finish today, oh, pulled it out. When I finish today, I'll just go back over everything and give everything another good watering because we are not due now any rain for, gosh, it looks like a couple of weeks or so. So, I'd rather, you know, give them a really good soaking now um, and get them going. And just this little measly sprinkle from the rain the other day. <laughs> it's funny, no matter how many notes I keep or plans I make, I somehow still manage to forget what I've put in place because, I mean, I know it's a bean, but I'll be thinking, what kind of bean is that? And it won't be obvious until they actually start coming up and showing me their flowers and their shapes. Is that enough balotti? No, we'll do a few more. So yeah, keep your notes, keep your plans, but keep them in a safe place, not like me, all over the shed floor and goodness knows where in my flat. Now when they all do, let's say they all grow, I actually sometimes leave both in, but decide for yourself, you might want to just pull the weaker one out and go with the strong one. There's plenty of space on the frame for a couple, though, so I might leave them both if they both come. Okay, mark when the last Balashi was. Done. Next one. Oh. Who's next? Pea beans. One of the other little jobs I'm really pleased to have got done this week. I say little job. It was a bit of a mammoth effort was to get this um, herb bed dug over more finely and to get out as much of the bindweed as I could and there's been grit added and I've just started placing out where I'm going to have my lavender with enough space for them to um, grow into a little hedge there which will be really easily accessible for me to harvest from the path there and then start to fill up the rest of the bed as and when I can. This lovely strawberry was on our share table the other day 
with a load of others. So I thought, oh yes, I could pop that in the herb bed. But the lovely thing is, I had the most absolutely wonderful, beautiful surprise yesterday, or the day before, I've lost track of time, when someone very kindly, anonymously, has given me some vouchers to go to my local nursery to get some herbs so I can start to fill this bed up. Oh, I was so touched. After a really rubbish week, and after so many disasters with seeds and then with those herbs, it was such a thoughtful, thoughtful gift. It Honestly, it just, thank you, thank you, thank you, whoever you are. It really touched my heart. Oh, such a gorgeous day. This wind is lovely. Right, time to get the lavender in. <laughs> I might do it in a minute. On the other hand, I might just hang around here for a little while and have a cuddle. You alright, Poppy? Oh, it's hard work being a cat in the sunshine, isn't it? Wowzers. It's suddenly getting so blowy out there, I can hardly hear myself think. Never mind speak to you all. Oh, so I thought I'd come in here. So yes, a huge, huge, huge thank you for the, um, the gift voucher for the herbs. Yeah, I am so excited about that. And you know, it's funny how these things work, isn't it? Because I also had such a lovely encounter in one of my local shops this morning. Um, I'm having to buy a bit of compost. Never mind. I mean, the fact is, this is mostly for bed number three, which is where all the teepees are. If you think about all the bean arches and those teepees and everything, it's all scavenged branches and wood and grapevines and what have you, so it hasn't cost me a penny. Um, but the things I want to sow, oh, sorry, I've got a massively itchy nose. The things that I want to sow underneath, the seed is really, really fine. So even though I've oh, massively <laughs> worked that soil, it's still quite lumpy. So I thought, you know what, if I just get a, a, a thinnish layer of compost on the top of each of those little six square beds that the teepees are in, at least that will be something for the seeds to get going in. Likewise, I'm going to do the same in the herb bed, because although I am going to go and buy some herbs, thank you, um, I am going to try and start a load from seed as well. So I need to get some compost for that bed. So over the last few days, I've been going to my local ironmongers, and uh, oh, they're brilliant. So it's it's like an ironmongery place, but they also do wood and paint and garden bits. It's a proper old-fashioned... Um, fork and all's job it's brilliant so <laughs> i've been popping in that most days i get myself a four litre sack put it in my granny trolley and drag it to the garden <laughs> and it's such an effort but you know without a car that's how i have to do it so i'm not complaining but it is a major effort anyway i popped there in there today just this afternoon just before i came down here and um it was so sweet, without even prompting them. He, the guy who owns the place said, Vivi, how many more do you want? We're on first name terms, I've been using them for years. How many more do you want? And I said, well, I'm not sure, probably, I don't know, five or six. I'm not sure, I need to kind of work it out. And he said, well, look, why don't you work it out this afternoon or this evening, pop in tomorrow, tell us how many you want, and we'll bring them to the garden for you. How lovely is that? Can you imagine someone in B&Q or, I'm not having to go at B&Q, but B&Q or Bunnings or any one of those places, can you imagine them saying, I'll tell you what, I'll pop it in the back of the car and bring it down for you. Love it. So if and when you can, shop local because, you know, you can build up these wonderful relationships. I've been using them for, how long have I been in this area? Oh God, it's like 15 years or so. And because I've had a couple of, properties in this area and each one has been a doer upper it became a standing joke that every time I went to see them they'd say have you not finished yet and I'd say no I finished it I sold it I'm on to my next one that's how I managed to have my own little place by getting a doer upper so yeah they're not necessarily as cheap as all those big out of town places but put it this way 
I don't have to spend a bus fare to get there. They're just over the road. They know me by name. If it's just something really, if it's like one of something, like a random screw, they'll often just give it to me. They'll just say, oh, take it, go on. Because um, they know I'm a good customer. They're a great shop. Brilliant, brilliant customer service. Can you imagine if I'd had that kind of response from that herb company? Mm, they could learn a thing or two. I should get them down here to have some training with my ironmonger guys because they're fab. Ah, so all is well. It's just that wonderful time of year, isn't it? Where, you know, hopefully our seedlings are coming up. How are all yours doing? I know that a lot of us are onto second sowings, as I was saying earlier, but things are coming up. We're putting seed in the ground. The days are getting warmer. The days are getting longer. It really feels like we're turning a corner. It really feels like the garden is going to start producing soon. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so, so happy. After having had a proper miserable couple of weeks, I'm feeling really happy again. And uh, that's what the garden has done for me. Thank you, garden. And it's also what a beautiful little gift given anonymously has done for me. And what a fantastic bit of service from one of my local shops has done for me. Got my smile back. Yay! So, before I explode with giddiness, because I think that's the way I'm going this afternoon, I'm going to say cheerio to all. I hope your seedlings are thriving. I hope you're getting seed in the soil. I hope your soil is getting warm enough to put seedlings in. And I will see you all again really soon, I hope. Maybe next time you see me, I might even have some herbs to show you. And even if I don't, don't mind. We can just get together and have a little play in the garden. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Take care.